Hey what's up, welcome back to another quick flutter tutorial. In this one I'm going to show you how to implement push notifications for Android using flutter and firebase. So let's go to your firebase console and let's create a new project here. I'm just going to call it push Nerdy tutorial and I'm just going to disable the Google Analytics for now and let's just create a project. Awesome, so now that you've done that, let's come back to our code. And I've opened up a brand new Flutter project, so you should just get this demo homepage. And I've got my Android emulator here on the right. So before we do any of the code, let's make sure to connect our Flutter project to the Firebase. So in the terminal, I'm just going to say Firebase login first, just to make sure that you've got the correct email address. Cool, and then let's say dot pub global activate, and we want to activate the Flutterfire CLI. Sweet, and on Mac, it seems like we get this kind of issue, so you just need to copy this and paste it in. And the main thing we want to do here is Flutterfire configure. So you can see it's going to fetch the available projects, and hopefully we can see our list of projects, and that's the one that we just created. So push nerdy tutorial, and select the platform. So for this one, I'm just going to do only Android. And I'm just going to hit yes. And that should be done. So if you come back to the console and you refresh the page, it should say that you've connected your Android app. Awesome. So now let's come back to our code again. And we want to add in a couple of packages. So Flutter, Pub, Add. And the first thing is Firebase Core. And we also need one more, which is the Firebase messaging. So if you don't know what we just did, if you go to your project and you go to your pubspec.yaml, this is where all of the packages and dependencies are going to be organized. And you can see that we've added the Firebase core and the Firebase messaging here. Awesome, now we can start coding. So I'm gonna delete everything below the main function just to create this from scratch. So I'm going to create my app and let's create our material app. And at the beginning, let's go to our home page, which we haven't created yet. So in the library, let's create a new folder called pages just to keep everything nice and organized. And I'm going to create our homepage dot dot file here. So this one, let's just have a blank scaffold. And if I come back to the main dot dot, you can now see we can import what we just created. Cool, and then if you save and run this, it should just be a blank scaffold, so just a blank white app. Now, just so we know what page we're looking at, maybe we should create a app bar and just say home page for the title. Now, when we're working with Firebase, we always need to go to our main function and just sort of initialize a couple of things. So we need to say widgets flutter binding ensure initialized. And we want this function to be an asynchronous function so that we can await and Firebase initialize app. And in the options, let's just say the current platform. So I'm just going to kill the app and I'm just going to restart it just to make sure everything is connected and it's fine. Now, I ran into this issue a lot when dealing with Android emulator and I figured out a solution for it. So if you go to Android and your build.gradle file, if you look at this number here, if you just change this to 14, then we should be able to run the emulator again. And honestly, I'm not entirely sure why, why we have to do that. So if anyone knows, just let me know below. But we should be able to run our app now. Awesome. So now that everything's done, I'm just going to create a new folder called API. And let's create a file called firebaseapi.dart. And this is where we're going to handle all of the Firebase related services. Now, just before we code, I want to just have a plan so that we know what we're doing. So I'm just going to comment here. The first thing is I want to create an instance of the Firebase messaging. Then we need to have a function to initialize the notifications. And we need a function to also handle the received messages. And then we might need another function just to further initialize some of the background settings. So I'll explain what all of these are doing. 
So just starting from the beginning, we need to grab an instance of the Firebase messaging. So let's just create that here. And then we can create our first function. So this is going to be a future and I'm going to call it init notifications. So in here, the first thing we have to do is we need to request permission from the user. So this is going to prompt the user just to allow the notification. And then we need to fetch the Firebase cloud messaging token for this device. So when you install the app on your phone, each device is going to have its individual token. And let's print the token just so that we can see it. So normally you would send this to your server. And so let's start creating this. If you go to our instance, so the Firebase messaging, you can see we can request permission. And then let's grab the token as well. And then let's just do a quick print statement here so that we can see what this token actually is. Cool, so if I save this and I just run it, nothing's happening because we forgot to call this function we just created. So let's go to the main.dart file and when the app fires up, it's going to start off from this main function. And let's just also get our Firebase API and then let's initialize the notification. So that's the method that we just created. Awesome, so let's just save this and run it again. And you can see in the console that there's the token for this particular Android device. Right, so if you just grab this token and you go back to your console, if you go to this engage and you go to the messaging, we can create your first campaign and let's get the notification messages and let's try to send our first notification. So I'm just gonna call this Flutter app and you can send a little message here. So I'm just gonna say, sending you a notification, bro. And you can click on this test and you can see it's asking for the token. So let's just paste our token in and then I'm gonna click test. So let's see if this works. So if you come back to your homepage, so I'm just going to exit the app and you can see there's the little not notification, it just got received. Sweet, there it is. So if I click into it, then we can go to our app. On a very basic level, this is how we send notifications using Firebase. So now I wanna show you when the user clicks into the notification, how we can go to a very specific page to display that information. So if you look at this next function that we're about to create, the function to handle received messages, that's what we're going to do. So what we're gonna do first is in the pages, let's just create one more page. And I'm just gonna call it notification page. And this will just be a very basic scaffold with an app bar. And since we're dealing with a few different pages, we're going to need to set up some navigation. So what I'm gonna do is let's define some routes and I'm going to call this notification screen. And one useful thing is going to be a navigator key. So if you just give this to your material app, this will help us navigate between different screens very easily. Let's come back to our firebase.api and fill out that function. So I'm just gonna call this handle message and as a parameter, we're going to have the message for the notification. Now, if the message is null, then let's just not do anything. But if the notification has a message, then let's go to that specific page when the user taps on the notification. So, and you can see here that navigator key that we just created earlier. So let's just hit enter to import it. And you can go to this current state. And usually when we navigate, we can use this push named to go to the route that we defined in the main.dart file. And what's really useful here is you can see that we can pass through an argument. So what that means is like pass through our message. Cool. And then the last function to fill out here is just some ways to handle the background settings. So handle notification if the app was terminated and now opened. And also we want to attach event listeners for when a notification opens the app. So I'll explain what this all means, but starting with the first situation, which is when the app is terminated and now opened, if you go to the instance, then we can get the initial message. And then let's just 
handle the message. So that's the function we just created. And we can also say on message open app, we can listen for any of these messages and pass through that same function. So if you just save that and you come back to our notification page in this build method, let's get the message and let's try to display it on the screen. So I'm just gonna call it final message. You get the modal route and get the argument for the notification. And so once we have this message, then we can just say, all right, give me that notifications title. And give me the body. And also just give me the data as well. So let me show you what we just coded up. So we have this initialized push notifications. And so let's just make sure to call this method at the very beginning. And now if I restart this, uh, looks like we have another token because we installed it again. So I'm just gonna grab this and in our console, maybe let's switch up the message and do another test. So if I just add that token in again and I hit test, then you can see there is the notification. And now hopefully if I click into this, we just navigate to the notification page and then we can actually display the contents of that notification in our app. Cool, so we just did that with some test messages. So if that's all working, if you scroll down, you can hit next. And then we have to select the app and there's our Android app that we connected. Hit next and then you can schedule notifications. So you can do it now or you can schedule it for a particular date and time. You can see we can also do recurring notifications. But I'm just gonna hit now. Let's go to next and review and let's publish. And so this is how you create a new campaign for notifications using Firebase. So hopefully that was simple and clear to understand. If you have any questions about any of the code, just comment below and I'll try to come around and help. But this is how easy it is to set up push notifications for your Android device using Flutter and Firebase. And now I'm gonna to try to figure out how to do it for iOS devices as well. So look forward to that one. And hopefully you learned something. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.